7.30 item. I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Yep. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I read the... <laughs> okay. Uh, at 7.30, we will have the 2019 BIT Auction Committee with three of its members, Ms. Francomano, <coughs> Ms. Yankee, and Ms. Karen Berg. Then we will go on to special education updates. After <coughs> that, 8.20, School Committee Liaison to the Audit Committee. Proposed 2019-2020 School Committee meeting dates, Dr. Beardos. School Committee vote, vote on school choice, which we have to do every year. Acceptance of donations. Two flutes to the Foxborough Music Program. And we will close with other matters. Are there any unscheduled visitors who'd like to come forward? Okay, I'll move on to approval of minutes. Are there any additions or corrections that you came across? I had none. I had none. I move to accept the minutes. I'll second. All in favor of accepting the minutes as presented? Same. One and same. Four, zero, one. Thank you. Teaching and learning highlight. I believe I will give this to Dr. Verdos. I would like to invite our special guests from the borough school up front to the guest table. They're going to talk with us about their reading incentive program. If you've been around the borough, you've seen some pretty cool treasure maps around the building. And I know they will share with us what those are about. Each um, of the committee members, you have an orange folder there. You can see those treasure maps on the inside. Those are up on the walls of the borough school. And they're going to talk about this reading program with their librarian, um, Ms. St. Germain. And then we have Ms. Sacello and Ms. Greeley as far as our reading specialist over at Borough. And then, of course, Mrs. McCarthy. But we'll get to our students, too, and have them introduce themselves and their grade and <coughs> go around. Sure. Okay. Do you want me to give a little introduction? I would love for you to give an introduction. All right. So um, since I've been at the Borough, which has been a long time, so uh, <laughs> we've uh, <coughs> always periodically had authors visiting. And about five years ago, we made a commitment um, that we wanted to make it an annual event. And our PTO is always very supportive. So uh, we were very fortunate the first year. We had Peter Reynolds. And then the second year, we had Brian Lees. And after the second year, um, our librarian, Darissa St. Germain, uh, had this brainstorm of connecting our annual author visit with our read, reading incentive or Read Across America program in March. So she got her buddies here, uh, Melissa Zicello and, and Rita Greeley, <coughs> our reading teachers, and together they've been doing this for the last three years. So I'm going to let them talk about it, and then maybe we'll have the students introduce themselves after. Perfect. Okay. So we started our first year, we had uh, Chris Van Dusen coming to visit, and he writes, if I built a car and if I built a house. Um, so we did if I built a school theme and every classroom has a bulletin board so we decorated the bulletin boards as their school and during library we let the kids brainstorm what they would like to have in their school and they of course came up with um, things Trampoline like a roller coaster. Part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so we made a list for each class and then came up with a value for each room, which transformed into minutes read. So they actually had to earn their rooms and then they could build them and put them on the board. So then the next year we had Matt Tavares and he writes a lot of baseball theme books. So then we did a baseball diamond on the boards and they had to. Um, <coughs> earn their way around the bases and their home runs. So this year we're going with a pirate theme. We had um, author Melinda Long visit on Thursday and she writes how I became a pirate. Mm -hmm. So we did a whole pirate treasure map as you can see in your folders. Um, we put a little treasure chest. <coughs> It's clear and you can fill it. So we've been filling it with doubloons that the kids have been earning with their reading minutes. They earned little coins, which are doubloons, and a few gems. Um, and I 
think it gives them a purpose to their reading minutes and it gives them something to be excited about mm -hmm. and they're sort of a group as a class and they work as a team to outread the other classes. <laughs> and how long does the project take? Uh, two weeks. So, uh, yeah, about two weeks. So they have two weeks of minutes that they record, and each Friday they would bring in their little slip. They had a coupon, it's in the folder as well. They would just add up the amount of minutes, and then they would put together as a classroom, and then we put we equated that to the, the balloons and they put them in the treasure chest. <coughs> mm -hmm. What grade levels are they? All of them or? Yep, K4. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yep. They all have their own bulletin board and all the little it. pirate people and <laughs> <I love> the <laughs> incentive. So what the reading incentive program does, it really creates a visible culture of literacy or reading within the borough school. So visitors, staff, students can, you know, walking through the corridors, you know, they're seeing literacy around them. So it's a it's a nice feeling of a community of, of readers and hopefully lifelong lifelong readers. Um, they've been doing a great job and I and I really like to thank uh, Mrs. St. Dorissa for always coming up with these great themes. She's um, really the brainchild behind uh, coming up with a fun, uh, unique, and motivating uh, topic or idea, so she deserves a and lot the of the credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And really, the kids motivate each other. Yes. I heard um, our math specialist said she saw a line walking down the hall, and the kids said, wait, why do they have more gems than we do? <laughs> uh, they read more. So they went back into their class and did a little math and figured out how much more do we need to read and per person. Awesome. Do you guys want to introduce yourself and talk a little bit about it? So why don't we go through first and introduce yourself. My name's Olivia and I'm in second grade. My name's Alita and I'm in third grade. My, my name's Ali and I'm in fourth grade. My name is Emma and I'm in first grade. Nice to meet you all. Well represented. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys want to talk about it? Olivia, you want to start? What it, what's, have you had fun doing this? or? Yeah. My favorite part is when you have to read to reach your goal. Like if you want to like see if it's with money. Like if you want to go on a trip, you have to earn all the money to go on the trips. Mm -hmm. So you need to do your chores to get what you want. <laughs> That's a great But reading's not a chore, you uh, love it. <laughs> <laughs> Alina, what about you? Well, I really like it because like it depends on how many doubloons you get according to how many minutes you read. So like everybody gets like a fair amount because if somebody read like a little amount, they like got what they deserved. And if someone read like a thousand minutes, then they got what they they wanted. But except the problem is somebody could like not even read and just write down the minutes. Uh, so no, we hope there's the honesty is the best honest, part, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, what about you? I really like like the program myself. It gi it gives um, like makes kids want to read much more because usually they don't see a book but they just don't read it. But then, but then what what is this? They usually want to compete and then they'll read more mm -hmm. and that and that makes them better. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. right. What about you, Emma? Um, like. My brother, he like mm -hmm. keeps on wanting to read just because of like learning. He's in kindergarten, right? <laughs> 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 so it got him going even, even as kindergartners? Is he trying to compete with you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> <Starting more minutes. laughs> Do you guys Funny. have any questions? Oh, and then also actually the classrooms were <laughs> rewarded with a signed copy um, of, is it? Uh, uh, how I became a pirate, or pirates don't change diapers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, she wrote both of them. She autographed the book, and they got to take pictures outside of their um, bulletin boards with the, with the class with mm -hmm. the author. So that's oh, great. That's and wonderful. split the loot, right? They're gonna take down yeah. Yeah. their treasure chests and split the loot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> other than getting your little treasures, do you all enjoy reading? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Good group of readers right here. <laughs> so this was in my packet when I arrived here, right? 
So what do I have to read tonight to, to actually make this? You earned it. Oh, that's a good earn it. What do I have to do tonight? Does anyone can I, I promise I'll read. Probably over 20 minutes. Over right. 20 minutes? You got it. I'll do that. I'm not, I'm not even do an hour. <laughs> we'll, get you more, we'll get you more gold. I love it. I'm going I'm to come in and collect it. I'm coming in after. Our minutes are class red. Well, the thing is, I didn't tell them how many minutes each doubloon was worth. Mm -hmm. I told them that after the first week, I would tell them what their total was, and then they could go out and count their doubloons, and then they had to do a little bit of math oh. and figure out how oh, many. Oh, that makes sense. So so <laughs> well done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm wondering if maybe um, after they read all these books maybe they could have a chance to have like a book chat and talk to each other about what their favorite one was and mm -hmm. why they liked it and which one took them the longest or the shortest or would that be fun to talk about your books after you're done reading yeah. them? Yeah. Or maybe club. you can write some facts down that you actually really like. Yeah, maybe, maybe you could be like an advertisement for your story so that other people would want to read it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know when I had the opportunity, Ali was one of the group, one of the members of the group of fourth graders that I was able to speak with and asked about the Burrell School and what you loved. And one of the things that the fourth grader said was all of the authors that the PTO has sponsored mm -hmm. to come in. So as a, by the time you're in fourth grade like him, you're going to have seen all of these different mm -hmm. authors of all of these famous books. And it was something that the fourth graders told me that they loved having all of the authors and it's because of the PTO that sponsored yeah. them. Mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. Thank you guys. Thanks Thank for you having all. us. Thank you for coming and talking to us. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is our favorite part of the meeting when, oh. when the students come in and say what they're doing. It really is. <laughs> you got to be we really on enjoy TV. it. Yeah, that's what they yes. were all like. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the monitor's not on, but you can watch yourselves on YouTube later. Oh, yeah. There you go. yeah, there we go. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job, everybody. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> That is a great idea. The author visits were always one of my favorite things. I was, mm -hmm. I was vice president of the PTO, so I did programs at the Taylor, and so I went to all the programs that I was organizing, and the authors, well, the kids just loved it. It's so much fun. They loved those visits. And a good segue yeah. with our BIT yeah. auction yes. committee that coming up next. coming right up. Yeah. <clears throat> Welcome, BIT. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Hi. Here for return engagement. Um, we'll do a quick introduction so if you want. That would be great. Thank okay. you. I'm Sarah Francomano. I'm from the Burrell School. Christy Yankee, Taylor. Karen Berg, I go. So we're three members of the six member BIT committee. Um, so <laughs> from the IGO, we have Lori Katie and Karen Berg. Uh, from the Taylor, we have Jillian Pelletier and Christy Yankee. And f at the Burrell, it's myself and Tara Markey. But we're here to kind of give you a quick look at what we're planning for this year. Um, so it's the six members. We're all working together really well. We came together mm -hmm. very quickly as a group of friends that decided, let's just get this done <laughs> and make it fun. Work. So we all came together, and we've been working together <laughs> already for about three months, which yeah. is a lot quicker than I had done this a couple of years ago, and we had maybe started <coughs> by March, um, and now we are really far ahead. So it's it's a great, great. Uh, it's a great awesome. team, and we're very excited. Mm -hmm. um, and Christy's going to tell us a little bit more. I think about the first part. Everybody wants to know is where is the auction? Great. So um, again, Christy Yankee, Taylor mom. I moved here just about a year and a half ago, and I wanted to make sure that I took the opportunity tonight to say thank you to the school committee because I know that with your support, um, Superintendent Sp Spinelli at the time um, was able to work with us, a family who was building in town and kind of were in between, like, what do we do when our house isn't built? So I want to thank you for that. Um, and it was interesting because, and I know, Richard, you know this, but I'm not sure if everyone else does, that I am an a high school administrator. And um, I didn't realize the importance of PTO necessarily, especially at the, in the secondary level. It's not, you know, we're not as connected. Um, but truly, the PTO was the organization that I felt gave me access to the schools right away with open <clears throat> arms. And the PTO is the reason why I was able to engage and um, be instantly informed about the practices of Foxborough. So um, here I am. 
I think this could be a little bit of hazing. The reason why I'm like um, on this bit committee, so I, I say, we're just like, you know, just join, you'll be fine. You you fine? Right right I thought I was planning yeah. a party. Um, I didn't. You are. You are. All right. Certainly, one of the uh, biggest ones. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be phenomenal. But really, what's been awesome is just the degree to which the committee has hit the ground running. And um, Sarah will talk probably again a little bit about um, efforts made so far. But everyone should mark their calendars for November 22nd, which is a Friday. And we're so excited that we have the support of the <coughs> Pavilion, who will again be welcoming us to their amazing space. Um, we're super excited for that. And what you'll notice this year is a little bit of a theme. Our slogan, if you haven't seen it, is the future starts now. Because we truly believe that some of the things that the PTO is able to offer students is truly foundational um, in supporting the schools that take care of our kids every day. Um, and what you'll also notice for 2019 is an increased level of student voice in the bit to make it a little more tangible that night and leading up to it as to why we're doing this. So we've already uh, talked, we've already put in the request in, in the music department to the um, department chair, and I'm sorry that I forget the name of that person, um, and kind of saying, you know, we love for this to have some students playing music as people like enter the auction and things like that um, and just really bring the student piece to life um, and I won't give any more away than that but we have some ideas up our sleeves so mm -hmm. it's really excited um, and the logo in the video oh okay so <laughs> we, needed, we needed a new logo for 2019 so we were working with oh, a high school yeah. student to develop that for oh, us right. oh, so they did that for cool. credit yep. Mm -hmm. And then we're having an opening video before the live auction, which is where we really try and do the money grab to get people excited and have them understand where that money goes. So what we're a working with a current high schooler to get that hype video going cool. for us. You know, we're not exactly the Patriots, but we're trying to kind of get there um, to get people really excited and engaged. Because you know, at live auctions, it's hard to get people to focus. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking some music and some videos and something might help us in that regard. But outside the auction, which is kind of, I'm not gonna say it's typical because it's a huge thing for us. We really wanted to put a big effort towards raising money ahead of time. There's so many months where we could be doing events and fundraisers. So we did a sale before Christmas that Karen ran of slides, you know, shoes that, you know, like flip flops. Uh, that you can personalize. We made a, a, a decent amount, I think about $900 mm -hmm. yeah. specifically $900. on just on Excellent. that. Um, we are doing a big cornhole tournament coming up next month. So that's going to be a big fundraiser for us as well. It's sold out with all of its spots, like in four days. <laughs> uh, it was a little overwhelming. And then something else we're doing in May is cleanup day. So we know, you know, Dooley does a great cleanup day around town, but we're going to specifically work on those elementary schools. And it's not exactly a fundraiser for us, but it gets us something. And the something is Disney tickets that we can use as fundraising opportunities. So Disney mm -hmm. changed the way they, they used to guess, give us all four tickets. Mm -hmm. um, now you can earn up to 20 if you get people to do community projects. Oh, so if we get over fine. 75 people to participate in our cleanup day on May 11th from one to four, <laughs> we can earn 20 tickets. So if you know what Disney costs, that's kind of a good thing. And then we're gonna you know, space out over the next couple of months of how people can win them. So we're gonna entry, give them back to Entry the tickets? Pardon? Entry tickets? Yeah, park okay. hopper ones too. The yeah. ones that can wow. go from place wow. to place. It's not just that's huge. Really that's wonderful. Yeah. So those can be, you know, $120 each. Jeez, so if we can earn one. I was gonna say, thanks I think for they're I think they're both, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of crazy. And those will be outside of the auction? That's before the auction? Yeah, so we're gonna give away so four to a family that participates in cleanup day. And then we might do something over the summer where we put them into a raffle basket. And then we're going to insert them into the auction into different um, items that we have. So we'll have 20 to work with mm -hmm. instead of four. Mm -hmm. And all we have to do is clean up all the schools. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll be really it's good. And by clean up, we mean like mulch and flowers and rake and all that Beautifying. other fun thing. Beautifying. 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 We'll there get we all the trash on clean up. I was going to say, we'll get the trash up. And then yeah. you guys can yeah. do yeah. your thing. We work on that. Yeah. So oh, that's done. awesome. Everybody that's loves fantastic. the elementary schools in town. So um, Cahill has given us. 30 yards of mulch. That's fantastic. Wow. He's giving us bags and yeah. picking up and dumping our dumpsters for free. That's generous. So it's, everybody has welcomed our ideas with open arms. It's been mm -hmm. really awesome. 
And uh, Karen's been hitting the ground running on sponsors. They've been sending us lots of opportunities. And We've been getting great support from, as Sarah mentioned, the, the town and the businesses. Just getting, we're trying to do sponsorships up front a lot more than it's been done in the past. Mm -hmm. And we're, so we're getting great support there. Because we're starting so early too, we're able to help um, give them some publicity and, and marketing through our Facebook mm -hmm. and just sharing information about these businesses and how much they're helping us. And, and it's going great. Yeah. I worked on it in many, many years, and you guys are really looking outside the box. That's amazing. Yeah, and that's the good thing about the six-member committee. There's so many different and um, expertise yeah. areas mm -hmm. that we all have. We all do something different, that's so fabulous. it's been great. Yeah. Um, so far, I mean, up to this date, we haven't even started if we've raised about $8,000 already. Wow. So we're, <laughs> we're well on our way. We won't tell you our goal. It's big. <laughs> we have big dreams. So I'm not even going to break the other ideas. <laughs> um, so, do you have any questions? No, Just a big bravo already. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're doing kickboxing, something kickboxing. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah, I forgot Yeah, we are doing kickboxing. So I didn't know right. what that was. I kept seeing it pop up, and I didn't know what it was. Yes. Yeah, it's the I go. Yes, that's that's in um, on April 9th. So it's just yeah. a class, or it's a class. It's um, uh, actually a Foxborough mom. Yeah. That teaches um, a class that I take personally at Fit Factory, and she's phenomenal. I can't miss it on my Fridays. <laughs> Tried to have mm -hmm. some bit meetings on Fridays, and I said no. <laughs> and, <laughs> my kickboxing, but she's doing that for us, and then we're gonna get together after if mm -hmm. people want to. Um, and Union Straw is actually donating anything we purchase to 10% of whatever we purchase there Excellent. later that night as well to support us so yeah. what night is that it's um tuesday april 9th tuesday april 9th thank you so it's just another great example of how the community embraces mm -hmm. the schools and mm -hmm. the things that we try to do for the schools and i think it's easy to forget because we're in it but how fortunate we are mm -hmm. that they do they go above and beyond and it's it's great to have your volunteerism and your and these things are so much work. I can't mm -hmm. believe they roped you right in like that. <laughs> I know you've only lived here a year and you're already like already not just PTO but doing the biggest, yeah. the biggest this is the biggest this is the biggest thing. It, I wouldn't have done it if it weren't this particular team. We are a group of friends. So that, it's that helps. Out great. That's great. That helps. Helps. Yeah, I just take when you take a look at the logo or any of the graphics, please know that those were created by your students. Yes. That's fantastic. So that's we you are know, super excited about that piece this year. That's awesome. <laughs> What a, that's a so, great idea. I love that you're incorporating everybody. Yeah, so definitely like our Facebook page, and we'll try and keep you as up to date as possible. I already I think I'm already, have. I was going to say yeah. I'm on it. So I see that's all your stuff. It's fantastic, everything you're doing. And I think it's so nice the way, um, I know that they used to rotate it, so I go would do it one right. year, and Burl, right. and then yeah. Taylor. And this is a much better way to do it. to do that job. It's it was a much. huge was job, much. even it with got, a lot of support. So yeah. Yes. No, it's, this is a great way to do it, and I can tell you guys really enjoy one another. But it's still a lot of work. Our group chat is pretty crazy. I check it at 3 p.m. <laughs> well, um, and I mean, again, we saw the you know the author visits. Mm -hmm. This is what, this what makes those it. visits yeah, that's right. possible. That's right. This that's is paid for. It yeah. absolutely does. So yeah. thank you so Probably much. Anyone who's watching efforts. YouTube after if you're interested <laughs> in contributing, sponsoring, love to hear from you. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. And, and it is an exorbitant amount of work oh, yes. for all of you. It's so a lot of work. Oh, thinking yes. outside the box and, and having friends that makes it better, but it is a lot mm -hmm. of the work thing you'd and be planning. Doing. A lot of hours. And yeah. it's yeah. always done just so well. I mean, I enjoy coming to the auction every year. We hope to see everyone there. It should be fun. Oh, yeah. And it's nice that it's in Foxborough. We tried really hard to yeah. keep it in town, mm -hmm. which is yeah. a definite selling point. Yeah, yeah it's fantastic. Absolutely. Yeah, the Lakeview has been a great community partner. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. From banquets sure and. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Fundraisers. Wonderful. Well, calendar is good marked. luck. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Good Thank luck. You very much. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <coughs> Great ideas. All right. Yes. Dr. What I'm saying? So in team, team, please, for special we'll get, we'll education right. programs update. So, as one of our um, action steps on the strategic plan we have the special education update that mm -hmm. takes place annually usually in the month of march and dr einzel and her team here will be talking specifically about an area of focus that has to do with transition so you have the slides in your pa packet and um i'll let sandra if you'd like to introduce or have everybody introduce themselves sure. Once again, we're back when we're talking about transition, and this year, instead about talking about transition from Diane, Diane Galanti's class, <clears throat> the pay program, into Dave uh, Griffin's class, and then on to adult services, we're going to be talking about transition through the years. And we'll be um, Kim McDowell, our team facilitator for the district, 
Liz Deshane, she's our team chair at the middle school, part-time, and Pam Anderson, the department chair for special ed here at the high school. Diane, <coughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> Diana Parr um, is not able to join us tonight because she became ill, and um, Suzanne Zavatsky had another engagement. So, let's begin. Transition for students with special needs begins with a referral, and we're starting at the preschool because this is where our first time that parents get to meet Foxboro Public School, so it's very key, this transition. So it's a referral from early intervention called EI, referral from a parent or pediatrician or outside facility, that's child fine. What is the referral process? What are the assessments? What happens at the eligibility meeting? What happens when the child is found eligible? And what happens if the child is not eligible? So. What happens um, <coughs> is that Diana Parr gets a, gets a list of students that are turning three that are coming in from EI, and we have several different early intervention facilities that feed into Foxboro. And from there, she goes out and meets either the, with the parent and the EI person at a, at a meeting, and or she meets with the parent and they do a screening inventory. At that point in time, <coughs> we do um, we also, every year, according to regulations, we send out a child found, find, and this is a, I'll just send this around. This is a copy of what we put into the, to the newspaper and that we put in public places that really says that if you know of a student that may be in need of special needs, has special needs and needs uh, um, specialized instruction, please contact the office. So when we do the, with the referral process, what happens then that, that we have the assessments that are clean, uh, we have a screening process that Diana com completes, and at that point in time, if she does not find areas that, are, that she believes are necessary for a full eval, she talks to the parents. If the parent still wants a full eval, we do that. And, <clears throat> and so if the, there's a, issue, a concern about the area of um, speech and language, then the speech and language therapist gets involved. If it's fine motor, occupational therapist will get involved. If it's uh, gross motor, the uh, physical therapist gets involved, or if it's more global, that's when Diana would do her, it's, we use the Battelle um, inventory for the evaluation. Um, at the eligibility meeting, um, we have a flow chart that's by the state, and I'm gonna pass that around as well. This flow chart, um, I'm gonna go that way? Okay, just give one and then okay. go this way. All right, that sounds okay. good. <laughs> Keep me organized. I'm just gonna stir up a little bit. <laughs> so this flow chart, yeah. <laughs> Now this flow chart is, is a, a state regulated flow chart and you have to answer these questions at eligibility meetings. So um, at the meeting, each, of the, each person that's done the assessment shares their findings and there's a discussion about whether the student is, has special needs or not. So does the student have one or more of the following disabilities? This is our state. Autism, developmental delay, intellectual, sensory, that's hearing and vision, neurological, emotional, communication, physical, specific learning and health. If the answer is yes, you go to the second question. Is the student making effective progress in school? If the answer is no, you continue with the third question. Is the lack of progress a result of the student's disability? If the answer is yes, you go to the next question. Does the student require specifically designed instruction in order to make effective progress or does the student require related services? That's speech and language, OT, PT, and if you have a visual problem, that would be a teacher of the visually impaired, if a hearing problem, so forth. And at that point in time, if that says is yes, the student is eligible for special education. So at, the, and at that point in the meeting, the, the team talks about the goal. So if you, the, there is an issue with, regarding language, the speech and language person would say, I think there needs to be a goal about language, and then have very um, specific benchmarks that need to be met. If it's occupational therapy or physical therapy, again, those things would be, we would have a goal and benchmarks at this point in time. So, um, so that's what happens if the child is found eligible. If the ch child is not found eligible, Diana Parr makes a point of talking about what community resources this family can go to. So we have, um, we have uh, the Y does a lot of different things and so does the public library. And then there's a, um, um, a, a it's called, I'm just sorry. Self-help. I'm sorry? Self-help. 
Yes, so sorry. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're helping. I'm just helping you. <laughs> <laughs> I, got here, so I, I know. I know. So my voice. So anyway, so the self-help, they have been very helpful recently because we've had a lot of students that have um, been referred by EI because um, they have moved in from different countries. And we have not found them eligible. But, <coughs> um, but this this agency has been able to come and do play groups with us within the town and, and that's been fabulous it's a good it's a good partnership nope. so this is a picture I had an opportunity to go with Diana Parr out that's an EI uh, employee and we were just about in to enter um, the house and talk with the family about what the process is and um, I have to tell you, it took almost two hours because we talk to the EI, we go in and explain the process to the parent, and then what we do is she does the screening. And so it does, this is a very important process because you want the relationships with families. And we really want to make sure that we're doing right by finding out whether this child is eligible or not. We also do this with our community partners. Um, a lot of our students that are in the preschool often um, go to a private preschool as an extended day. So we visit these um, community partners making sure that we use the same language, the same kind of process in terms of behavioral um, programs that we do with not only the community partners but the families as well. Transition from preschool to kindergarten. Again, a lot of this it will be very similar, but we really want you to understand that the transition, we work really hard at, at making sure it's successful because we've worked so hard with the students. We want them to have a successful time in school, and part of that is being successfully transitioned from one level to the other, or even one class to another. Okay, so Diana Parr meets with Suzanne Zavatsky and the, um, the elementary principals one right behind me here <laughs> and um, and really we talk about what is what what it looks like the <coughs> services look like in kindergarten and then what do they look like in elementary school because we have to be developmentally appropriate so um, Diana Parr and Suzanne Zavatsky schedule visits to the preschool and to the elementary buildings further meetings are held to really talk about pretty t particularly about students who have um, more significant maybe needs and we want to make sure do this do, do these students need to go to a program because at the elementary level we have two programs one um, the 810 program which are students for more cognitively challenges and then the team program for social emotional um, and so we really want to make sure do these students need a more restrictive setting or do they need to be more included or do they need a hybrid in recent years we've done a hybrid where um, the students aren't quite ready to leave preschool, so we do preschool in the morning and kindergarten in the afternoon, and then they'll go the next year to a full-time um, kindergarten. Okay, um, IEP meetings are scheduled and to discuss transition to kindergarten with parents, and the IEP meetings are held and transitions discussed specifically. within the elementary schools. This is, um, people meet, uh, the elementary team chairs, works with the principals and, and, and the service providers to really sit down and look at, okay, they're coming in from, um, they've come in from kindergarten and now they're here. Do they still need programming that is substantially separate or more restrictive? Or during the time that they're at the elementary level, could they go into a less um, restrictive settings and being more included? So that takes a lot of conversations, and we often talk to parents as well about it because sometimes it is a little scary to reduce some of the, um, the, the program services that are pull out and when we really want to push students in and really most of our students really fly and become really nice and independent and that's what we want we're always planning on when it's time for them to graduate from high school and or from public um, schools at age 22. students who are placed in specialized programs are assigned to a general ed classroom all the time so they're all at, at, every student has some time included in the regular education Okay, we talked a little bit about that. <coughs> right. So here's some preschool uh, staff visits with the program teachers. And we have preschool staff meet with kindergarten teachers to discuss the skills needed to be successful in kindergarten. It's always good because we want to make sure that the preschool teachers understand what it takes to be successful in kindergarten. And we also want the, um, the kindergarten teachers to understand what preschool is all about. Mm -hmm. It's all about relationships here. 
Sometimes preschool staff meet former students and have a visit, and that's always fun to see. Okay, next step, elementary and middle school visits. This. Thank you. <laughs> so this is a really another very <coughs> critical point in the transition process that moved from elementary and, and into middle school. And a lot of time and energy is poured into the process and the work that has been done already to build, maintain trust with the families and build relationships because that really helps build and bridge the transition to new, a new building and to new staff. So the first step <laughs> in this process <laughs> is um, really just <coughs> the staff coming together at the elementary and the middle school, uh, you know, including Ms. Zavatsky, myself, Dr. Einsel, Ms. McDowell, Mrs. Abrams, just to talk about the programming that occurs both at the elementary, at the elementary level and the middle school level. And in these discussions, there's consideration for not only the current needs of the students, but you also have to consider the context developmentally and how this is a stage where students are changing and the program at the middle school may also have to be tweaked and changed to accommodate where the students are at. So that's something that we talk a lot about. Um, next, what we do is middle school staff will, will go down to each of the elementary schools to again talk with the special education liaisons to learn more about the individual needs of the students and also to observe the students in their classroom setting to get a really good sense of um, what, what they're, put a face to the name and see kind of what they need and how they're interacting with their peers. Next, we schedule IEP meetings and those IEP meetings occur at the middle school with both the elementary team chair and the middle school staff and the parents so that we can go over the student's IEPs and really talk about what that transition will look like to the middle school in very specific terms. And these are just some pictures of Suzanne and Kim working together on planning the transitions <laughs> here. And the middle school staff and, and regular um, <coughs> elementary staff discuss, <coughs> discussing programs. <coughs> Post Kim. Okay. Yeah. Post-secondary transition planning. So post-secondary transition planning begins in middle school because it begins when students are turning 14. So the year of their IEP where, the, where they will be turning 14, we begin post-secondary transition planning, which is really uh, the initiation of helping students understand where they want to be when they finish <coughs> school, what do they want to be doing, specifically in three areas, work, education and community living and that's really supposed to be driven by their interests what their strengths are and what their desires are and we're supposed to help them you know sort of achieve those goals um, we have uh, what we, we start a separate document which is in addition to the IEP which is a transition planning form for each of those students and it's they will have be renewed annually the same way that the IEP is until the student graduates and or turns 22 and it's essentially, it's similar to an IEP, but different because it involves the entire team and it can involve members in the community or someone, you know, particular in a student's family that will help them accomplish what some of their goals may be for that year. Um, so essentially, it looks at the student's post-secondary goals um, and then it looks at what skills um, are needed in order for them to achieve that for, the, for that one year. Um, and then it's an, essentially an action plan as to, okay, who's going to help this student in each of these areas? It could be a pastor, it could be, you know, a, a mom, if it's drivers, whatever it may be. And so this is just an additional document that we add to the IEP when students are beginning the, the um, post-secondary transition. Students are in, invited and begin attending their team meetings um, as well, which is really important. Um, and parents, we, we work with parents to try to help them understand the importance of the planning and have them engaged in the process to know exactly what it means, what it looks like, and how they can be very actively involved in that. Um, and we also have, as part of the transition planning form in the IEP, it's driven by transition assessments. And in middle school, because we're beginning it, we do less transition assessments. And I know that Mrs. Anderson's going to speak a little bit about that. But what we do in middle school, we do a student survey just to sort of, you know, talk to students about, you know, where they think their strengths are, where they think they may need help, how do they ask for that help, et cetera, et cetera. That helps us. Um, that's one form of assessment we do. We also do the learning style inventory, so students are aware of what their learning style is, which is really important as they you know, go through high school. Um, and 
with all of this documentation, we build portfolios for students so that they have those to take from, you know, the eighth grade on to high school, which include their IEP, their most recent assessments, um, their learning style inventory, a resume typically they've all have developed um, by the time they leave. Um, so that's sort of how we do it. And then, you know, again, it's, it's a thoughtful process that's done every year at a student's annual review. So next is the transition from middle to high, and which can be very similar to the elementary to middle school transition in terms of the types of meetings and discussions that are happening in terms of the student needs, the programming, and what needs to be put into place to accommodate the needs of the students transitioning up. Some of the key players, again, myself, Ms. Anderson, Ms. McDowell, Dr. Einzel, um, did I forget anybody? Oh, and Beth Sylvia, and any of the liaisons that are involved in these cases. Um, initially, there um, are observations that are completed and, you know, additional discussions about the, the needs of the students. Um, then IEP meetings are scheduled for each student that's transitioning from, from the eighth grade to the high school. And within those meetings, we discuss all of the questions and, you know, make changes to their IEPs, anything that involves, um, you know, bridging that transition from middle to high school. Um, and as Dr. Einzel um, talked about earlier, for students who are in specialized programs, this is another point where we have a discussion about you know, what's happening next with this student with regard to their program. We're considering their least, you know, their least restrictive environment and do they continue to require being fully a part of a program or do, they, you know, do we consider them being part of a hybrid and having more inclusion opportunities. So this is that point where the team really starts to ask these questions and talk about what their needs are moving forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, I guess that's pictures, pictures. <laughs> More pictures. <laughs> it's interesting because sometimes we need additional information, so there's some additional testing that goes on <clears throat> when they are in a, a situation where we're looking at transition to different levels or to a less restrictive setting. Our little ones and our staff. Okay. Pam. Okay. So, um, as Ms. Shane said, that, you know, when we transition to students, I usually go down to the middle school for their meetings, and um, normally the parents are really nervous about the, their student transitioning to the high school and what's that going to look like. And the kids are really nervous too because they really want to know what the cafeteria is all about. That is like <laughs> their main question for me when they ask a question because they've heard through the grapevine that they no longer eat with their class. And that is like a really scary thing for them. So I do everything in my power to try to calm their nerves on that. But that's usually how our first meeting begins with the students. And then once they get to us, for the students really with the more mild to moderate that have ACT Lab, we really focus a lot on um, what we call our mini lessons. Because our goal is from when they get to the high school, we start telling them, now that you're here, we really have to work on getting you out, whatever that might look like. So through the ACT Lab, um, like I said, we do mini lessons. We really try to vary them based on the grade. And I do have, and I'll pass it out, um, an idea of um, oh, actually, you have it. Mm -hmm. Our academic timeline, and it varies. So this is just a sample from one year, um, but some of the things we do every year with the students. So we'll talk a lot about um, first getting them in and getting adjusted to say we'll give them like a password tracker. So when they're on Teams and we're on this program or that program, they have all their passwords and because they have to join different groups with the teachers. So we'll spend on time with that. We'll spend time on executive functioning skills. Um, we set up what we, what we have is kind of following up on what Ms. McDowell said. We have a transition binder that each of the students complete. Um, and we have different tabs on there. We have who am I, we have disability information, work information, post-secondary education planning, outside agency information, contact, and a summary of performance. I can pass this around. It, everyone's is, this one was, is not complete. So I grabbed this one because there wasn't a lot of stuff I had to um, deduct the name out of. So, um, I'll, you know, you, you can see that. Um, but what we'll do with that is as, as the students build on that every year and we put every one of our mini lessons gets put in here. So if it's on executives functioning, if it's strategies for test taking, if it's learning styles inventory, they go here. And then when they graduate, we give them also their, we also do like talk about their IEP because as you'll see on some of the lessons, we talk a lot about really understanding their disability. 
um, because the students haven't really started coming to their meetings until the end of middle school. And we find oftentimes that the students can't even express what their disabilities are. So we really start working on that from freshman year because as some of you know who have students in college, and if they happen to be on an IEP or had been on an IEP or even a 504, um, they need to be able to express themselves what their disability is. They need to be able to tell the admissions people or the disability office people how they learn. And they need to let them know what accommodations work for them. So we work really hard on practicing that with the students because as you know, once the kids get to college, they say, okay, mom and dad, thank you. We're gonna take your kid now and we're gonna talk to them separately. You know, a lot of times the parents aren't really invited to attend those meetings. So again, much of our focus is really preparing the kids for that. If we prepare them for interview skills, we prepare them for job skills. So we do all the academic piece and we really do focus on, as you can see, I don't go by my PowerPoint. <laughs> Any of you that know me know that I have a hard time staying on track when it comes to that. I could talk about this for days, so they'll be nudging me saying your time is up. Um, but it's really, again, to really fool them, prepare them in all aspects of, of what it, they need going forward. Um, we do spend a lot of times, if you look at the timeline, we do differentiate between the fo uh, freshmen and sophomores and the juniors and seniors so that we make sure that the juniors and seniors, especially as they're getting closer to the end, are prepared for whatever life beyond Foxborough High School might look like, whether it's working on applications with them, helping them with their brag sheet, again, doing interview skills, all that kind of stuff. So we spend a lot of time um, working with the kids with that. And it's very individualized based. Some kids are just off and running and, and they know from freshman year what they want to do and, and how they're um, going to get there and other kids do not. Okay, so we talked about the binder, we talked about the different things. One, um, we also do a transition planning inventory and I have a uh, sample of what that looks like for you. Um, so what happens is, this is just like one page I just copied for you to see what it looks like, but every year the students do it. And what this shows us is it, it focuses on all the different, i just steal one because my, my brain is, is mush right now. Um, it focuses on work, it focuses on education, it focuses on employment, leisure, functional communications, and the students fill this out, it's about four pages, and they fill them out. And then we kind of do a little chart of what are the areas that the students answer. As you can see, it goes from strongly disagree zero up to strongly agree. And in the middle area, the two th twos and threes. So if it's a three or above, we feel the kid's pretty good in that area. But if it's a th like below that, then those are focus areas for the student when we, again, will individualize the lessons that we do with them based on what they need. And then what happens is we do this every year with the kids and we kind of compare, how have you grown? How have you changed? Remember last year, this was really hard for you, but this year, look at how much you've grown in this area. <coughs> and then ev when we do the students' three-year reevaluation meeting, we also have this for parents and we also have a teacher fill it out and we have the student redo it and then we combine all three and look at you know, what are the needs you as a parent might see for your student as compared to what the student sees. Mm -hmm. And it's really often very fun and interesting. Um, we always kind of chuckle when we get to the part where the students say, you know, yeah, I clean my room and I cook and the parents say, <laughs> what? <laughs> and they kind of whip their heads around and are very surprised by that. So, you know, we always, as, as kind of our little side jokes, always know that that's going to happen. So, anyway, so we do that as part of it. And then I wanted to share with you you kind of um, kind of one of the fun um, uh, things we do with the kids it's called my next move and it really is an interest kind of career survey and I was hoping I would be able to show the PowerPoint but I don't think I can so I have these pictures of the um, slides for you so I'm gonna actually wait till this gets out before I start talking. <coughs> so you'll see when you um, when you get it in front of you that it's put out by ONET profile and it's called my, my Next Move. And when the students get on, we give them the instruction that basically um, we say to them, do not think about whether you have the skills to do this particular job, do not think about how much money you make. Just answer it as if 
it's something you either really want to try or don't. So they're given the categories, again, from strongly disagree to agree. And I apologize, the print is so small, I couldn't get it any bigger. So the second slide down on the page might have statements, as you can see, assemble electronic parts, drive a truck, examine blood samples, investigate the cause of a fire, create special effects for movies, paint sets for plays, etc. So there are 60 statements. So then once the students answer those statements, you'll see on the next page, they get a little graph. Now in this particular case, the person's interests were really rather spread. Oftentimes we'll see a lot higher um, peak in the student's interest. So from there, so say for this student, their, their highest area was artistic. And it gives you a description of what um, artistic means. So in this case, it means your interests um, are, well actually this one doesn't say it, it's the next one, I'm sorry, the bottom one it says people who are artistic like to deal, I should have brought my glasses, with things that act, acting, music, art and design, creating their own work, etc. So then you go to the next page and you kind of, they give you job zones to choose from. Job zone one being like if you walked out of the building right now as a 14 year old, this is the kind of job you can get as opposed to job zone, zone five, which would be master's plus. So we chose job, jo job zone four for this particular person. And the next slide kind of shows you, and I wish it was in color because you'd be able to see the, the different. But these are like the top jobs for this person with, four, with a, a college degree. So career technical education teacher in the middle school, an interpreter and translator, and it goes down. And the different puzzle pieces tell you what's a great fit, what is not such a great fit. So then this person that did it, if you go to the next page, said, I want to see what an interpreter and a translator, what does that mean? What do they do? So you click onto that job. And this is that next slide on top is what you get. It tells you what the job is. It tells you what type of knowledge you need, what kind of skills do you need to do that job, what type of ability, what kind of a person do you need to be to be able to do that job. It kind of gives you some ideas of your personality. Do you need to know technology? And then at the bottom it tells you the level of education. And then the very bottom, middle bottom one says job outlook. And this is my favorite part for the kids because if it's a sunny, bright, this is a bright, job opportunity or job area. It gives the student the idea of what the mean salary is. And then it also allows you to kind of click on your state. So you click that button and you get the bottom slide. And then when they get to this bottom slide, based on the color, and again it's hard to see, it'll tell you what the job outlook is in the particular part of the country. So if you're living in Massachusetts, this is a really good job for someone in Massachusetts, not so great in Texas. So it kind of gives you that, and the kids can do more clicking and more clicking, and they can find out if they did it in Texas, how much money would they make, if they went to Florida, if they went to New York, and they can print all of this, and so this is one tool. And it really is rather accurate, and I was saying that the, the person that completed this um, I, I, they actually work here and I don't know them very well so I said oh what is your they're a tech person so I said you know what is your certification and she said English and one of the other pages on here actually said as one of her greatest jobs she should be an English teacher <laughs> so I think it really is pretty accurate when the kids have yeah. done it or adults have done mm. it too it kind of works out told me I should be a teacher. I'm so relieved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you made the right choice. Yeah. So we do all of this. So, um, next slide? Yeah, next slide, sorry. Yeah, next slide. <laughs> they cut me off. Don't you know. <laughs> <laughs> so within the high school, besides you know our general with the ACT Labs, as you know, you've heard before from Diane Galanti, which is our paved classroom, and we focus more on academic, pre-vocational. It's kind of a combination. Some students go up for some classes, some do not. Some are all classes. Social skills, that's 14 to 18. Then some students will move on to Dave Griffin's PAVE program. Focuses more on the functional academics. We definitely do a lot more vocational, life skills, social skills for 18 to 22. Students not in the speci specialized programs, I kind of talked about this already. We meet ongoing all year long. We have really good open communications with guidance with the, the gen ed teachers. We have to be. 
So we all work together collaboratively all year long. We do many meetings if necessary. We do five minutes after school. We de do whatever it takes. Um, and then as the students prepare to graduate from high school, part of the things we talk about at the IEP meeting are what level of service will the students need once they graduate. For some of our students, it might be a referral to Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission, which is MRC. They also are doing a new program now where they start working with students from age 14 and they do it's called pre et pre-employment training service so they'll meet with the kids and they'll kind of focus on is it do the kids need some help with self-advocacy do they need some help with job skills do they need some help with social skills whatever that is and they'll work with the kids they meet after school for about an hour once a week and they'll work with the students with that some of our students <coughs> need more than that so we'll make what we call a 688 referral and that would be different state agencies it might be um, developmental mm -hmm. disabilities it might be MR they might decide it's MRC it could be as you can see the brochure um, DMH, all different, DMH depending upon the different services. So that's pretty much Good. high school. Thank you, Paul. All right, Kim. Okay. So um, one of my responsibilities that I truly enjoy is, is being the liaison and the advocate for our students who are placed at a district. And so when students transition back in district, it's a very <coughs> um, thoughtful process that takes a lot of time and involves a lot of different people. Um, so similar to any student um, in district at any level, um, their progress is monitored very closely, data driven in terms of what are the specific skills, what is the, you know, what do we want them to accomplish before we feel comfortable that they're prepared to um, <coughs> return in district to a less restrictive setting and how will the staff in those programs teach them those skills and how will they be able to show that demonstrate that through the data so once that um, decision has been made um, and it can be a student transitioning from a more restrictive setting like a therapeutic day um, down to um, a collaborative but I'm here to tell you in terms of the students coming from collaboratives back in district. So when that, dis that decision has been made that we think we're close to that, several months in advance, I will come back in district wherever, whatever building they'll be returning to um, and speak with the administrators there, talk to teachers, um, guidance, and also most, most uh, often with the school social worker, share information about the student and ask them to go and visit and observe the student. So they'll go and observe the student and then they become a part of the team. So we have sort of a out of district school team and a Foxborough public school team. And we um, carefully plan a transition for that student, which includes them coming to the school and visiting, spending time there, meeting staff, navigating the building, knowing what, you know, what their day will look like. Um, and it's similar a similar process when students are placed from in district to out of district where it's a you know a larger team that that sort of helps that student transition great thank you and these are some of the transition experts that we have in our first guidance and teachers <coughs> assistant principals and they all work really hard and this is just, and I had to put Sue Abrams in here <laughs> I thought that she, she is really good all of our principals are really good but she did this photo up for me <laughs> and she, she transitions she transitions good point. yes yeah. with her wreath yeah and some kids some of the students that are are transitioning so this is the end but for some kids it's uh, students it's the beginning and um, I just wanted to, I forgot to send around the transition form that Diana Park hands parents and you can see why it takes uh, over an hour to sit down and talk with the families about it. But if you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Well, I know Joe has showed us his binder when he started um, working. Yep. He, showed us how, he showed us how it all, um, everyone had assigned each thing. And he had to tell the hours, right, Joe? <coughs> it was like an hour and a half then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, like, you love that. The student does it, and then the educational assistant who goes to the job with you does one. Right. Yep. You put all your hours in there. You know, we do like skills, like from skills. excellent, good, fair to needs improvement. Yep. You're sharing that with us. What about the uh, extended school year time? Is there anything for this in the summer that for, for the kids that need it? 
Yes, we do have an extended school year program and actually we partner with the extended day services. So um, at the middle school uh, at Ahern, we have enrichment that's provided by the extended day program and then at the kids camp at, at IGO and then the IEP teams determine <coughs> what students we believe need these summer programs. So um, here at, 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 at IGO, it tends to be kindergartner and first grade and then the rest of the students are up at the, uh, at the Ahern where they have enrichment where they can, we can have them attend, they have dog grooming and they have, um, uh, they have movie making, they have math games. So That's our good. students, yeah, our students push into those with support and then come out and do academics. There's also some tutoring involved. Mm -hmm. And then we also have it for the, um, the f older kids, the 14 to 18. They do a lot of jobs, they go out to jobs and we continue the vocational piece with the students in the summer as well. Yeah. That's a kind of continuation of the, of the year, yeah. yeah. So. I do want to say though, it really is about relationships. It's the relationships that we have with our families and the relationships that we have with staff. If we didn't have really strong relationships, this would not be successful. And then you run into a problem where um, a student is unhappy or and that makes a family unhappy and, and we really want everything to be very successful so they have a positive attitude towards school. Was a very detailed in depth. It was, no, it was very, it was very. I, I really enjoyed this. Mm -hmm. I, I think I learned a lot. I, I mean, I've heard you present in other years, but I think I got a better. Well, you don't really realize this is just part of the job. All the right, transitions yeah, that right. happen, and and, and even though there's minutia, yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of meetings, but I think that that's what really helps us better understand who the student is, and so we can make those decisions. Very thorough, thank you. I, th I think you hope the public gets to view these on YouTube because mm -hmm. it's really important to see the work in transitioning, right. to, to, to think back to the middle school teachers going down to the elementary, to see the elementary kids like in the classroom setting, to get out to the transition programs that are outplaced and everything. And so it, it's really important for people to recognize the work that goes in by our special education department to make those transitions, which are always critical for the parents. Yeah. To each, each, each one of those steps is big. Mm -hmm. um, they can actually be bigger than life in some ways, right? Mm -hmm. More than you can even think. And so it, it's just so critical to understand that how our, our staff, you know, vertically looks at it and looks for the whole child. So I hope people see that because that's that's the hard work that you, you've designed. So thank you. And did you say that the uh, elementary students go like right before going to the Ahern, they have their IEP meeting at the Ahern? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the same thing at the high school? I usually go down because we were doing it where the students came to the high school, but what was happening, a lot of parents then didn't want to bring the kids because they would have to dismiss them from school, bring them to the high school, and then maybe bring them back. So I started going down there, um, and then we, the eighth graders come up, and then we do do smaller tours with, with the kids that struggle a little bit more with the transition. I felt it was really important for me to be able to put eyes on the eighth graders mm -hmm. and for them to be able to see me. Um, yeah. And then even when they come in the tour, some of them will say, I know you. <laughs> you know? So, so we do do it a little bit different because of, because of that reason. Yeah. But it works. I think this is one of the wonderful things as far as the special education updates each year where Dr. Einstein was focused before it was mm -hmm. the transition and looking kind of right outside and mm -hmm. the career and workforce and what that looks like. But to be able to have the whole piece and to mm -hmm. focus in on certain aspects mm -hmm. of special education and again, how much goes into it as far as the vertical piece, as she said, the relationships, but the communication and collaboration that's so key between all of the faculty from each level. I think it also showcases what each person's role is mm -hmm. for each kid. I think yes. you hear these titles sometimes and you have no idea what those people do. Mm -hmm. So you can actually see not only how you collaborate with each other, but what your individual functions are and how they contribute to the overall success of students. Because it truly takes a village it and it takes all of us at the table for kids to be successful. Yes, so thank you yes, for all that you do. Thank you. Thank Maybe nitpicking, but on the child care programs in the Foxborough area, is there any particular reason why Bright Horizons, <coughs> Foxborough on 143 Green Street, is listed twice? No, but I'll, mm, we'll take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, I didn't know if it, if it was a, you know, two different programs at the same location or what. No. Yeah. 
Thank you. That's two different Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you very much. That was Thanks. very thorough. Thank you very much. Thank you. One of the important pieces, too, the self-advocacy part for students to really know what their disability is, going off to post-secondary education and really being able to know what it takes for them to be successful. Mm -hmm. but, and be able to express it. Correct. That is excellent. It's very detailed. I really uh, a lot got a lot out of that. We certainly I have can. a dedicated, yeah. caring I'll staff soon, okay. of professionals in this area. I mean, in, in all areas, but to see them um, assembled like this and, and see the continuum and, and how all the puzzle pieces do fit together was really impressive. That was excellent. <coughs> all right, now, school committee liaison to the audit committee. I have Bill talk a little bit about that. <coughs> Yeah, we're still in search of somebody to represent the school committee um, on the audit committee. It's not a, a heavy lifting committee. It, it uh, basically meets after the audit is completed um, to review the findings and, and go through things. Occasionally there are policy changes um, that need to be addressed. Um, so it's kind of important that the school committee has a liaison. Um, as, as a member of that, there's a, it's a five-member board, um, and it has the finance director obviously chairing it. So um, we're still looking for that person if someone's interested um, in, in filling that role. Uh, again, it's not a heavy commitment, but somebody who has a little bit of financial uh, acumen is the best probably fit for it because there is, um, you know, I'll say a lot of dry uh, information in there, but for somebody who understands it, it's a lot easier than, um, than for somebody who doesn't. Uh, we had a, a, a very <coughs> talented individual before who moved out of town, unfortunately. So, uh, but again, just you know, somebody with a you know a financial background would would do well with this. What's the, what's the time? What's the time commitment, or when? Or? It, it's it's literally you know could be as little as one meeting a year, and sometimes it's you know I, you know half a dozen if they're doing some major policy change like we did three years ago. So, but the, the major policy changes aren't. No, I mean, that was the first time in, in, in probably 10 to 15 years that they had done. So, like I said, it's very, but it is something that helps to direct, especially when you're looking at the audit, to direct any of the findings that come out of it as to where the town should go. And having us have a representative on it, you know, helps us to make sure that, mm -hmm. you know, um, the last time around there were some policy changes that, that could affect us from a budgeting point of view. And so it was important that, you know, we did have a voice there. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I'm allowed to go um, and participate, but I'm not a voting member uh, of the committee at that point. But still, we, we need that voting committee member, so. So there were five members? Yes, I believe so. I'll give it a go. You would you like to? Yeah. Can we? I'm not I think, sure. it, think it needs to be somebody off outside, outside of, of the right. school right. committee. Right. It's supposed oh. to be, it's supposed we, to be a somebody. Right. Yes. Yes. I was getting yeah. a little confused yeah, no, I'm there. Sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't I don't miss that part of it. <laughs> we could sign you up, though. Did I miss it? We've done it before. That's why. We've well, we got to find someone yeah. other than me. It's a community yeah. member. Yeah. Other, other than me. Other than a school committee yeah. member. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. A community member that represents us. Ah. Oh. A community member. Talk to some people, Richard. I will find <laughs> some. I'll look, yeah, we, we look. Well, I couldn't volunteer because no human here in this area. <laughs> <laughs> I have other gifts. <laughs> all right, so we should all maybe think about somebody that. Mm -hmm. And if they have questions, they could call yes. Bill in the office, yeah. too, absolutely. as far as if there's more questions on commitment or exactly what it entails, to absolutely call him. Excellent. Thank you, Bill. All right. Proposed 2019-2020 uh, school committee meeting dates. So <coughs> you have in your packet, thanks to Janet, the listing of what the first and third Monday of next school year would look like, being that we have the calendar that's now been voted by you. 
and there's not really anything um, unusual about it. It's pretty standard the first and third Monday of the month and beginning with our first meeting in August on the 26th before we open up with teachers and full staff. I think you should go to weekly meetings next year. I think so. <laughs> you do. Thank You're a you, funny one. Christopher. <laughs> I'll make note of that. That is was your suggestion. <laughs> so it's essentially two meetings a month, except for the month of September because we meet in at May, the end of in, August. In May. Mm -hmm. Right, and May, of course. And then May, because we have town meeting, which mm -hmm. would be the first at the beginning of the month. See any problems with it? I think this looks good. It's quite similar to last year. <laughs> I mean, the, the past few years, actually, mm -hmm. because we've had our August meeting. And our retreat in July is always scheduled separately anyway. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion that we approve the proposed 2019-2020 school committee meeting calendar. I'll second. All in favor? Five, zero, zero. Thank you. School committee vote of, on school choice, Dr. Meadows. I'm going to ask you to take that. So this is one of your policies by state law. You vote each year to whether we're going to accept non-resident students to Foxboro. We've always, um, in the past, you've voted against having non-resident students. I know we had more conversation about this last year and mm -hmm. did a little bit more research based on some questions that were asked of um, those districts that do accept choice students and, and you know what's the rationale behind that. And a lot of that ended up being they needed the students in order to survive mm -hmm. as a district. So it's some of those really small districts that are bringing in choice students in order to continue with their programs um, because of really rapid declining enrollment, which is not our case. But we do need to vote each year of whether we're going to continue. As of right now, our school district does not admit non-resident students. I think one of the questions that came out last year that's important to remember is the fact that <coughs> once you accept this, a child that comes in, if they came in in first grade, you're going to keep them all the way through graduation. So that doesn't become an option. Even though you can right. opt out after the child's here, that child still is right. going to continue through. So that was one of the big questions mm -hmm, that was raised mm -hmm. last year. Yeah. I'll make a motion that uh, Foxborough does not admit um, non-resident students. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Five, hmm. zero, zero. Aha, uh -huh. another part of our favorite mm -hmm. meeting times. Uh, acceptance hmm. of donation. So we have Kathy Thomas here that is um, don donating two flutes. And so asking <coughs> for your acceptance, it has there the, the model numbers of the flutes for information. I don't know if Richard has anything extra to add there. <laughs> other than, you know, we're very, you know, happy to have such donations. Right on, right on. I, the great, great opportunity for students to switch instruments or mm -hmm. try something else. And those are two different values flutes because one's a beginner, one's an intermediate. So, great opportunity. So. I would move to accept the donation of Kathy Thomas for the two flutes with gratitude. I second that. Any discussion? All in favor? Five, zero, zero. Excellent. Anything? And now we are already at I know. Other matters. Yeah. Um, I attended the Credit for Life Fair two weeks ago. Week and a half. I had no concept of two time. Weeks. Two, two weeks ago. ago. Oh no, because we had three weeks. That's right. It was two, two weeks, weeks ago. ago yes. Yeah. Um, and it was very successful as usual. Um, it didn't have too many kids being sent back to fix their credit, which means they're mm -hmm. learning more and more each year. Um, we're still in the process of union negotiations, Tina and I, with the, um, the, educa the educators. And we finished up our middle school interview committee. And now it's one. round one. And then in the second process, maybe finishing up that. We're done with that. And that was it. That's all I got. Yeah, that's it. 
<laughs> like my little notes I write upside down and <laughs> sideways. Very which way. I had a couple things. Um, I wanted to congratulate all the winners of the Scholastic Key Awards. I know there was a presentation oh, yes. in Boston ahead. over the weekend, and there's a long list of students that um, that won the awards out in the uh, trophy cabinet um, outside the media center. But uh, again, we had a, a great um, showing from mm -hmm. Foxborough in both art and sculpture and poetry and some wonderful um, accomplishments on, on the art side of things for our kids. And um, spring sports started today, so we wrapped up all our winter sports. Congratulations to all of our sports teams and everyone who won you know, Hawk Mock Honorable Mention and All-Stars. We had quite a few of those in Good. all of our winter sports. Um, and uh, and so many of our teams yeah. Made playoffs. The playoffs, yeah. That's right. A great year. Yeah. Excellent. And the, the last thing I just wanted to say, um, this marks three years since we lost Joe Heinrecker. Um, three I know. years it's yesterday. And it, it's, it's yeah, it's very, you know, it's his legacy does still live on mm -hmm. here in the high school. The seniors are actually the last class of kids to be in the building when Joe was our assistant principal. And, uh, this senior class. This senior mm -hmm. class, yeah. yeah the, this year's senior class were freshmen um, when Joe passed. Matthew passed, senior, right? Yeah. And, uh, and I know my son was a sophomore. My, yep. my oldest who's graduated. And uh, yeah, I just wanted uh, to say that you know he has you, he's senior. not ever going to be forgotten. I'm sure in this nope. building and his starfish legacy mm -hmm. definitely continues. So that's all I have. Nice. Rich. Nothing. Uh, just good luck to anyone trying out for the spring sports and great job to the girls basketball team once again. Um, the team that was supposed to be rebuilding went to the semifinals of D2 South. Mm -hmm. I know, that was great. And congratulations on your team making playoffs also. Thank you. I know our cheerleaders are competing down Ooh, in Orlando. Cool. I'm not sure. As we oh, they finished third. They that, finished third. I was, was going to ask. I, I did, did, did want to say that because yes. I had several friends who went on yep. that trip with oh, their well, congratulations. They finished them. third in the nationals. I'm so glad you mentioned it because mm -hmm. I knew there was something else I didn't write. Usually I write myself a list, and yeah. I didn't today. But they did They they did very well. And they have a lengthy season, our cheerleaders, because they start in August mm -hmm. getting ready for football season and competition, and then they continue all the way through March, so really two seasons for it right there. Yeah, so congratulations so to the girls. I know they yeah. did a lot and had a lot of mm -hmm. fundraising to mm -hmm. make this happen, so yes. congratulations to them. That's great. Madame? I think it's wonderful that our spring sports are out there practicing or trying out with mm -hmm. no snow. I was going to say, exactly. <laughs> on the field. <laughs> yeah. That was really exciting to drive in tonight and to see them out on the okay. turf field. I know, was, with that heavy, which was wet wonderful. snow. I was thinking about Rich and his team of people who oversee all this, wondering. It's well. It's it, besides us. It's just great for schools because last year the snow that hits so late, oh. it, it pulls your season back night. two or three weeks, and your and the athletic directors have scheduled all the games. Mm -hmm. Right. They all <coughs> in like ten days, and, and to reschedule two weeks of games is extraordinary. Yeah. Yep. It's extraordinary. The difficult. Oh, so it's. I know. It's a huge help. It really, is a huge help. Mm-hmm. Other than again, what's already been said, and our DECA students again, they did right. so they well. Did very well. So the other they group, do? they did very well. I don't have the specifics with me this evening, but we have groups we moving can, on. Mm -hmm. We definitely have um, a number of students that are moving on, so we can put that in your packet. Where are yeah. they going this year? Is it LA? Or was yeah. that last year? That last year know. they went to California. Okay, it wouldn't be Georgia? Georgia? For that. Georgia might be right. Might be it might be Georgia. 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 Nashville, yeah. LA, or Georgia. I didn't remember. Yeah. 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 last year. This year they go to Orlando. Oh, oh Orlando. Thank you, Joe. Oh. <laughs> thank you, Joe. Joe. Why didn't we just ask him first? I know. I thank you. <laughs> what were we thinking? <laughs> what were we thinking? So hopefully they'll come back and present, which yes, would be really definitely. nice. Mm. Yeah. And our students continue to do us proud wherever they perform. I saw Kendall, and there were mm -hmm. several other. Yeah. Yeah other uh, Foxborough High School students in the production of Godspell at the Orpheum yeah. mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. And bravo to our students who shine for us even though it's not a school-related activity. Okay, it's town. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> it's all town. Yeah. And happy spring this week to everybody, people, on Wednesday yes. and Thursday. Feeling it. 
I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I will second that. All in favor? Meeting adjourned at 821.